Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about people making fun of LGBTQ people like nonchalantly, casually, and you know, I wanna talk about how I think making fun of like gay people, whether that be lesbians or gay people, and you know, just making fun of homosexuals has been ingrained in society a little bit, especially through like the media. But I wanted to talk about it because this kind of scenario happened to me a little while back. And you know, I had some thoughts during that scenario and I, looking back on it, I, I'm, I, I think I would have handled it differently. But in that moment, <laughs> I didn't know what to think. Like my brain sort of stopped working. And so I just wanted to discuss it and you know, just share my thoughts from that moment and now like looking back on it a few months after it happened and so yeah I'll just get into that really look I'm now I know it's been a little while since I filmed my last video and to be honest my life like my personal life my family life has been a little bit well tumultuous stuff has happened things have happened and you know we're at a better place now by uh, we I mean like me um, but yeah it's been a little bit hard it's been a little bit bumpy I'm finally at a place where I can mentally clear my thoughts enough to sit down and talk with you guys now this um, situation that happened in terms of being made fun of it happened a couple months back I think around about and all I remember it was that it was one of my family friends birthdays we had a big party with all of my family friends we went out to a restaurant for dinner and you know like her family was there my family was there all of our family friends were there and we were at this restaurant and for some reason in this particular group of people I was hanging out with the kids who were a little bit younger than me by well, no, they were, they were like my brother's age. So they're all around like the 15 to 17 age range. I was chilling with them. We just had our dinner. One of the girls I was sitting with, she was telling me about like her little, little school life, like in terms of with boys and things like that. And she was telling me about this guy that she liked. And when I listen to high school kids talk about, you know, high school, now that I'm so far out of high school, I just find it so weird. I, I always think, oh my God, I was in that, like I was in that situation at one point too. It's just so weird to think about because I can't imagine going back to high school again. I <laughs> am so happy that I'm out of school, out of high school, you know, like, so when I hear these, <laughs> I guess they're kids, like they're kids to me, like they're all about my brother's age. My brother is seven years younger than me. So they're kids, technically, right? Anyways, she was telling me about her boy troubles, this guy that she likes, and how he doesn't reply to her Snapchats, and how she gets left on red, and you know, things like that. So my brother was at this table, and a lot of our, the other kids, <laughs> the other little teenagers were there too, and we were all just in on this story, we were listening, we were just laughing, and telling her how she should handle it and blah, 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 blah. It was, it, was, it, was, it was a good scenario. Like I find this, I love gossip. I know it's bad, but I always love gossip. And the fact that I don't know any of these people that she's, that my friend's talking about makes the gossip a little bit enjoyable because then I can just give her unsolicited advice. I can be like, well, as a 22 year old who's lived her life, <laughs> what life? Here's what I think you should do. I love doing things like that. While all this was happening and we were laughing, this girl's dad, he comes in to the conversation and he's like, oh, what are we guys like laughing about? What is happening here? My brother uh, jokingly is jokingly, but not really, because this is what we were talking about. He's like, oh, we're talking about girls, guy troubles. And we were like, yeah, pretty much. I was like, yeah, that's what we're talking about. And her dad said, oh, thank goodness you guys are talking about a guy and not like a girl. I remember in that moment, I was just sort of sitting there like, 
I remember my brother looked right at me. Everyone on that table looked right at me because everyone knows my sexuality. It's not, it's not a secret. So everyone just kind of went to me and I was sitting there like, <laughs> I was like, okay, so um, should I just go find the nearest cliff and <laughs> jump off of it? And <laughs> her dad was like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. I hope you're not offended, but like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and I was just sitting there like, complete blank, blank face. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to say. I, his daughter who was sitting next to me was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't know he was gonna say that. That was so uncalled for and blah, blah, blah. She's like, I hope you're not offended. I looked at her and I, in that moment, I was like, eh, no, no, it's okay. It's fine. I, no, I'm not offended. I was offended. After that situation happened, I was, we were in the car ride home and I was telling my parents about it. And my mom was like, why didn't you say anything? And I was like, in that moment, I was like, yeah, why didn't I say anything? As soon as the moment was done, I was like, oh my God, I should have said something. But it's hard to say something when you're completely frozen because you don't expect things like that to be said. And when they're said, you're just kind of like, what the hell, you're frozen. It's like you're unprepared. Like I, I, I didn't come with a debate prepared for this situation now, did I? I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. When my mom said, why didn't you say something? I was like, shit. I should have said something. My mom was like, next time this happens, can you please let me know and then I can tell them. <laughs> a totally unrelated scenario. So that was that situation that happened to me. Now, my my brother, the pretty recently, like I really like doing my nails and doing like my own manicures at home. And my brother was like, hey, I think I have some cuticles too. Can you do mine? I was like, sure, I can do your nails. Do you want a color? <laughs> and he's like, no, no. So I would usually just like clean up his cuticles, do a base coat and a top coat. And before I used to use like a glossy top coat, like I use on myself and I use on my mom. He had this glossy, like the clear glossy nails for a little while. And when he went to work, his boss literally said to him, oh my God, why do you have nail polish on? Like, are you, are you gay? Like, what are you gay? Like in that sort of tone, like, what the fuck? Are you gay? Like, why do you have nail polish on? I don't, I don't really remember how my brother reacted in that moment. I don't even expect him to react in any certain way because he doesn't need to be a just social justice warrior. I don't even want to be a social justice warrior. But I just, when he came home and he told me that, I was like, well, that's a little problematic. Why are we labeling something as me as nail polish and he just had clear nail polish on he didn't even have anything it was just a little bit glossy so it reflected in the light why is that being labeled as gay and why are people saying like what are you gay like in a derogatory way why why it just it really got me thinking that this whole like what are you gay is such an ingrained thing in society. I don't know how it is around the world, but being here in Australia, it's not an uncommon thing. I've heard it definitely when I was in primary school, when I was in high school, I've heard it, you know, like people just casually being like, well, that's fucking gay or that's pretty gay. What, what are you gay? Like I've heard variations of this, you know, I never understood why I got said because I never understood the problem with being perceived as gay. <laughs> Later on, I'm like, oh, duh, it's because you were gay this whole time. Even when I identified as straight, I never saw the problem in it. I was like, well, what's wrong with that? Like, what's wrong with someone perceiving you as gay? Like, why is that bad? Or, or when straight dudes will like hug their mate and then they'll be like, oh, no homo, mate, no homo. Is hugging your friend suddenly deemed as a, a homosexual act? <laughs> why is that a thing? Why is that a thing? And that leads into a whole nother issue of why it's not societally acceptable for men to show and express their feelings. That's a whole different story. With the glossy nails, my brother was like, can I not have the glossy top coat anymore? I showed him that like, you know, matte top coat exists. It doesn't matter. People shouldn't be making jokes about sexuality like that on such a, the best way I can say it is in such a nonchalant fashion because people just say it so casually and they don't realize that it's 
offensive. When I would hear it in like high school and in the school setting, I used to not be offended by it because I thought if I was offended by it, it would automatically make me a little bit uncool. And now looking back on a lot of things or looking back on certain jokes where it's like people making fun of the LGBT community, I get, I get so offended. And that situation that happened at my friend's birthday party, that was just one situation. It's not just that, but it's also the idea of perpetuating gender stereotypes. One of the aunties in that family friend circle, one of one of we have a little we have a little five year old in our family group, right? And he carries a a lunch bag with him. The lunchbox was a Mickey Mouse lunchbox. And yes, this is pivotal in information. You need to know that it was a Mickey Mouse lunchbox. This particular auntie, she was like, hey, how come you have a Minnie Mouse lunchbox? And he was like, huh? And she's like, how come you have a Minnie Mouse lunchbox? Minnie Mouse is for girls. You should have a Mickey Mouse lunchbox, not a Minnie Mouse one. And this five-year-old just kind of looked at her like, uh, no, this is Mickey Mouse. And she was like, oh, okay, never mind then. Who, who, who cares? If he wants to have a Minnie Mouse lunchbox, he can have it. Who really gives a crap? I don't. And I remember watching that interaction being like, again, another interaction that now looking at it, I'm like, shit, I should have said something, but I didn't say anything. This is what I mean. These, these like, these gay jokes and this like enforced gender stereotypes are so ingrained in people and so ingrained in our society that people one to two generations above me are talking about it as well and they're mentioning it as well if you ever catch yourself thinking oh how come that boy is wearing like a pink shirt don't worry about it don't worry about it what's wrong with liking pink What's wrong with a guy liking pink? He can he can wear pink. Pink is not a gendered color. None of the colors are gendered. You can like I'm I'm a girl. I'm wearing blue. Ooh, this is what I mean, right? Like why are we enforcing colors on genders? Why are we doing this? Also, it's just it's just confusing. It's just it's unnecessary, and I feel like anyone can like any color because <laughs> it's stupid to be like you can't like these colors because they're girl colors or vice versa fashion colors anything L lunch boxes they shouldn't have a strict gender on them because that's stupid you should be able to wear do whatever you want to do as long as you're not hurting anyone around you you should be able to do what you want to do when i think about why jokes like degrading jokes about like the LGBT community, why they're so ingrained in society and why it's so common for people to just say them so casually. I I always think back to, you know, media. Because if you look at, I mean, you can look at Bollywood as well. If you look at some Bollywood movies from, you know, mid to early 2000s, maybe even, I don't know about earlier than that, but definitely the mid to early 2000s, there were a lot of movies where they would simply include a gay character and make them the butt of the joke. You know what I mean? A good example for me would be Kalhunaho with the, okay, well the whole plot of the housemaid, Saif Ali Khan's housemaid, thinking that him, his character and Shah Rukh Khan's character are gay and her having like a literal heart attack. Hilarious. It's it's funny, it's funny. And in the inclusion of that gay designer dude who, you know, like waves like this and whatever, the inclusion of him as well. It's, we're purely making fun of homosexuality. That's what it is. And when I was younger, I found it hilarious. I thought it was hilarious. I was like, this is so funny. I was laughing every time that little like, the little gay designer character came on and you know i was laughing at the at the maid having a little bit of a heart attack every time you know saif ali khan's character and shadow khan's character were like caught in a compromising position it was funny i thought it was funny but when you look back at it you kind of realize 
it like it's through seeing things like this throughout your life that you learn that okay it's all right to make fun of gay people you know and then that progresses through your life and then you're like it's okay to make fun of gay people even as an adult like same goes for hollywood this whole oh let's make them gay because gay people are funny let's make them gay let's make this gay let's make that gay just so they can get a few laughs you know i think that's always been that's always been a thing in hollywood and bollywood obviously it's just starting to change and you know a lot more stories are being made about lgbt people these stories are starting to come out a lot of lgbt writers and directors are directing and writing these movies uh, even like theater it's starting to become more commonplace in theater and it's actually so refreshing to see it's starting to change it's raising awareness it's becoming more culturally diverse it's sharing more stories which i think is so good if you're the type of person that makes deprecating humor towards like lgbtq people I just want you to know that you can always unlearn these things. It's not like you're a terrible person for making these kind of jokes. You can always unlearn it and you can say to yourself that, okay, the jokes that I've made in the past probably were not very good and I've and I maybe offended a few people and I want to change. How do I go about doing that? How can I stop? making offensive jokes essentially because in my little situation with my with the uncle that i was talking about i wish in that moment i could have said to him that what is the big deal like what's the big deal if she was talking about a girl what if she did like a girl what's the big deal do you know what i mean and how he should be more mindful of what he says around his kids because these things leave an imprint on your mind as a young impressionable person like things like what he says unknowingly can potentially leave a bit of an imprint on his kids minds and i wish i could have told him that in that moment like just be a bit careful of what you say and don't maybe just understand that what you're saying maybe isn't the nicest thing to say and maybe there's nothing wrong in your daughter maybe liking girls she doesn't but this is a hypothetical like if she liked girls nothing wrong with that but i couldn't i chickened out in that moment but i think if it was to happen again i might speak out about it but yeah i know it's hard like it's definitely hard for me to speak out against say like aunties and uncles when they're making potentially homophobic slash degrading jokes uh, it's hard because i'm sitting there and i'm kind of like oh i should say something but I'm also a bit intimidated because they are older than me and I'm like, I don't want them to get mad at me or, you know, think I'm being a bitch or anything like that. But I always think back to, oof, we need to stop these kind of jokes in their track, otherwise they're going to keep continuing. I wanted to share that in case any of you guys who identify as part of the LGBT community, in case any of you guys have gone through it, I want you to know that you're not weak for not speaking up in the moment because even i didn't speak up in the moment and sure looking back on it i wish i did but you know i've learned from that moment and i now know what i would do differently if that moment was to pop up again in case you guys had been through the same thing or are going through the same thing i can only speak from a perspective of jokes being made towards homosexuality being a homosexual that's what i can talk about and that's what i can speak from from experience but i wouldn't be surprised if people are out there making jokes about like the other people in the lgbt community like jokes about the bisexual community and jokes about the trans community like i think it's so wrong but i think it is happening and i think people need to just start calling them out even if you don't identify as part of the lgbt community if someone is saying jokes like that around you and you are like whoa dude not on that's offensive you should have enough courage to pull someone up about it and if they say what 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 are you like gay you should not be you should not take that as an offensive thing you should say well no but i just don't think what you said was entirely appropriate 
and if there is someone gay or part of the LGBT community in the circle, maybe you might have offended them. You know, just, you don't have to be a part of the community that's being made fun of in order to call out bullshit. Like, if racism is happening, you should be able to call out racism, even if it's not against your community. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like that. Like, homophobic jokes are not welcome, and they never will be and they never have been but it's just something that has been happening and this is why i'm saying like even if you're not part of the lgbt community you should be able to pull up homophobic jokes and be like this is uncalled for and inappropriate don't say this again you know i know i've definitely got more courage to pull people up and if someone says shit like that in front of me i will now try to pull it up and be like, inappropriate, dude, inappropriate. But to all my fellow straight people out there, all my heterosexuals, all my cishet people, pull it up. On. But you can just respectfully tell them that, hey, what you said was just downright unacceptable. And doing that enough will shut people up and they will realize that, hey, yeah, what I'm saying is not appropriate and not correct and I shouldn't be saying it pretty much it for this video i think i've spoken enough about it uh do let me know your thoughts in the comments below i do read all of your comments share your opinions your thoughts whether you agree with my viewpoints whether you disagree with my viewpoints whatever it is let it let me know in the comments below because i like reading that stuff and yeah, if you have any video ideas or anything that you want me to talk about, also leave them in the comments below. As usual, my social media will be linked in the description box below. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I think that's everything. So I'll see you guys all next time. Bye.